everybody. Welcome down field level to the dugout. Dugout show is back with BJ Johnson. I'm a little bit extra protected today with the hard hat. As, you should be. as I should be. The wind whipping a little bit. And maybe Zach Earhart maybe, maybe didn't want to lend me his hat. So we went with the hard hat. And that's what we're loving. This is a hard team these Hyannis Harbor Hawks have been since the All-Star break. They've come back, maybe losing the first game out of the All-Star break. But they've come back, responded very, very nicely. And we're going to talk about that and a lot more with Coach BJ Johnson here today. So as I just said, two wins off the back of a loss to Falmouth. What have you seen in the team as a response after coming back from the first game and losing? I think I think just a continuation of what's been a really, really hot streak. Um, you know, really, if you look at it, it's almost like every time you look at the trends, you go and say, well, what have they done in the last 10 games? And they're like, 8-1-1, one, 9-1, and one, nine and one, whatever. So we've been on a really, really great hot streak. It's, uh, you know, it really is a complete team effort, too. It's like, our offense is outstanding. Um, they've, you know, they just respond in situations. Our pitching's been great up and down the line, starting pitching, relief pitching. And, you know, we continue this trend. We're in a really good place. Yeah, absolutely. And you want to talk about a complete performance. It was the one that came out of these Harbor Hawks in Hartford, Connecticut. They made the three-hour trip down to Dunkin' Donuts Park to face YD, and oh, they only threw a one-hit shutout in an 8 nothing victory. Zach Earhart, two RBI, as well as Cam Smith as well, two guys that have been perennial in this second-half surge for Hyannis. We'll talk about the individuals after we talk about the team, but as I said, pretty complete performance out of Dunkin' Donuts Park from the guys. Probably one of the most, if not the most complete performance that I've seen in two or three years. Um, you know, the pitching was just outstanding. Um, our hitting was timely. Um, you know, we, we, I don't know how many hits did we bang out, maybe 15? I think it was 14. Yeah, it was, um, you know, it was just everything was really, really going well on our side, probably not so much for their side. But I think that was, um, that was basically what our guys were doing, and I think they enjoyed the experience over there. It's a great ballpark to play in. They're very hospitable, and uh, it was well worth the trip. Absolutely. I mean, seeing an 8 nothing victory, seeing Mason Nichols going no hits through five and two-thirds innings, they even took that no-hitter into, it was a perfect game, actually, that they took into the seventh inning, as well as an 8 nothing victory as well. So it was a long, hard-fought trip. You get up early in the morning, but you go back the next day, or actually the game after the game, you've got an off day as well, so you're able to rest and recover some good R&R. &R. Now you come back here for a game against Wareham tonight, and you basically look to be riding the same kind of momentum you took out of Connecticut, don't you? Absolutely, yeah, and I, I will give the guys a lot of credit for, um, we had to, it, you know, what you th think about is we had to go all the way to Chatham to go play, so remember, 7 o'clock start, really quick turnaround got to go back to Hartford. I mean, we're like traveling all over New England. Anyway, and, and, and won both those games in pretty deciding fashion. And then uh, we get the off day. That's good. Maybe recharge the batteries, get ready for the entire stretch run. And um, knowing already that we've, you know, clinched a playoff berth, uh, that's a great thing. It's a great thing. Coach Johnny Davis joining in behind us as well. These guys, these guys like to have fun. They, they like having fun around us whenever we're on camera. But that's a question. You brought something up about the about traveling all over New England, it seemed. Was that something that the team had in their minds? Or was it just forget the times? Because, of course, Chatham is being the latest start on the Cape at a 7 p.m. start. Then you have to go and wake up pretty early the next morning to go all the way to Hartford. So was that something that the team had in mind? Or did you just say put your heads down and get the job done? Well, I, I don't. I don't know if anybody really processed it enough. At probably the beginning of the year or anything like that. Maybe you'd plan it differently. But anyway, it worked out fine. Our guys are really, really resilient, and uh, you know they responded beautifully. Your responses have been something as part of this stretch of about 13 wins in 16 games or thereabout. That has been that has been almost. The, the name of the entire game, responding being at Hartford, responding from getting up at about 4 or 5 a.m. and punching in the first inning. So now we move on from Hartford. We're back here at McKeon Park. We're going to do the good old thing where we go, what is, who did you, who or who were you the most impressed by on both sides of the ball? Once again, offense and pitching. We'll start with offense. Who was your guy? Boy, I don't know. Um, I, yeah, you know tough to choose. Uh, collectively, I mean, we're so, so good. But I will, um, I'll tell you maybe a little fun fact. You mentioned um, Zach Earhart. Zach had a very, very tough start here. Um, and if you can eliminate 
basically is over. He's hitting like 360 with mm -hmm. tons of walks and whatever. I don't know what his on base percentage was, mm -hmm. but I like looked it up last night and I said it's uh, it's unbelievable. So he's really providing a charge kind of at the top of our lineup. I mean, I think that's the same solid cast of characters. I would not want to face this team right now. I think they just swing it so well. I'm just, I'm just really, really impressed with us offensively. You basically said everything that I would have is that since his 0 for 26 start, he, you're, you're absolutely right. He's been hitting around 360, comes back from an 0 for 4 night at Chatham, only gets multiple hits out in out in Connecticut too. So that's another guy who has been epitomizing responses. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. I, I, you know what's been great, I think about a lot of guys here have been, they, these, any streaks that, if they're in a bad place, it's not really protracted. You know, they come back and contribute. This is a tough league to play in. It's a tough league to win in. It's a tough league to hit in. And uh, the people that can go ahead and turn it around and not let that really get in their head, just keep grinding, they're going to be successful. And this has been a successful pitching staff all season long. I think we say it on Coaches Report all the time. We say it on the broadcast all the time that you could almost go with the collective pitching staff award again. But is there any one guy in your mind, or would you go with the collective award again? 97 on those velocities that Coach BJ has been seeing. So before we sign it off, I do want to talk about one more thing in terms of going forward. You mentioned it to me a few days ago, just very briefly, about the 1-0 and mentality that this team has been playing with. You starts tonight, as you said, earlier that the most important job is the game tonight in front of us. How are you going to be using that 1-0 mentality going forward through the rest of the business end of this season towards the playoffs? Well, I, th I think you communicate it. I mean, and I, and I think what uh, players are kind of used to seeing that thing. I mean, you can get too far ahead of yourself. You can say, what if this is going to be, we've got six games left. What if we do that? You know what? The most important game that we've got on our schedule is the one that's tonight. Tomorrow night, That'll be the most important game on our schedule. I mean, we can't play six at a time. We can only play one at a time. And uh, I think the teams really embrace that. And I think they've done a great job competing each and every night. And uh, what you don't want to, what you want to do, not what you don't want to do, what you want to do is just put these little streaks together. And I think if you play hard every night, you do, hopefully we do our job in getting people in the best place. You have a really good chance to pull out a W. The W's have been flowing, and everybody has been put in the best places possible for Hyannis. They've rolled into the All-Star break. They're rolling out of the All-Star break all the way through the business end of the season. Special thanks again to Coach B.J. Johnson for joining me. As, as they've been saying, as they've been saying in this Hyannis dugout, Hawks are hot, so go Hawks for the business end of the season. Michael Kirsting reporting for your Coaches Report from the dugout.